All right, welcome. Before we execute this demonstration, I want to review the chemistry for just a moment. We've been discussing polarity where we say like dissolves like. Now, if you remember, what that means is that a polar solvent will dissolve a polar solute, and a nonpolar solvent will dissolve a nonpolar solute. So our demonstration today is going to involve a polar solvent and a nonpolar solvent. So what we have here is H2O, this is water, it has a bent shape, and it's polar molecule. We also have some hexane. This is six carbons and 14 hydrogens. As you can see from the shape, this would be very nonpolar. So on the lab bench in front, we have those things. We have water, which is polar. We have hexane, which is nonpolar. We have some food coloring, we have an Erlenmeyer flask that's been stoppered, and we'll get to these in just a moment. So let's pour in some water into our flask. Remember, that's the polar solvent. Now, let's add a little bit of hexane. Remember, like dissolves like, and these are not similar. So what you'll see is these are immiscible, meaning they do not dissolve in one another. We have hexane, which is the less dense layer that's on top, and we have water, which is the more dense fluid, and that's on the bottom. Now, food coloring. Do we think that's going to be polar or nonpolar? In other words, will this food coloring dissolve in water, or will it dissolve in hexane? If you noticed, that fell right through the hexane. In fact, none of it dissolved in the hexane. And you see that the food coloring is strictly um, limited to the water. So in this case, the food coloring is polar, and it dissolved in the polar solvent, which was the water. Now, what we're going to do next is a little odd. What I've done is I've taken a sheet of paper, and I've drawn graphite on one side. And graphite, as you know, is just carbon bonded to carbon bonded to carbon. Graphite is strictly nonpolar. So remember, we have graphite on one side of the paper, and on the other side is just the cellulose, just the paper. And then I cut this out. And then from the little square, or sorry, rather from the big square, I made lots of little squares. So we have here our little squares of paper, with hexane, sorry, with graphite on one side and just the cellulose paper on the other. And we mentioned that graphite is nonpolar. So let's dump this in. We're going to shake it up frantically. Just like before, the water and hexane settle out with the hexane on top. And if you can see, every single piece of paper has aligned itself or oriented itself facing up with the graphite with the graphite side facing the hexane. If we were to shake it again, we, we would have the same results. All of the graphite, which is nonpolar, orients itself towards the nonpolar hexane. And if you look underneath, the cellulose side of the paper, that's all oriented with the water. So the purpose of this demonstration is just to provide some evidence that like dissolves like.